the um, so the topic today is train to train a workshop. We had a very nice discussion just now, and um, we will just go a little bit more in detail about what we know. So basically, uh, what we are what we are trying to achieve here is to uh, give you into your hands something uh, which would help you if you uh, which you intend to have a training uh, on Omero for your users uh, locally where you're at your institution where your um, where your Omero is running let's say okay this would be most typical setup uh, which we are aim to aim to um, get here and what would that be is well first of all you would need some training walkthroughs you need some material to uh, to have to um, uh, know what you are going to teach at all then you would like to have training servers uh, server or servers uh, with some data and metadata in it and we will go into some detail of it uh, during the workshop possibly uh, analysis environments, um, meaning uh, this was also discussed, meaning some uh, third party tools, uh, which as you know, Omero is not specialized in anal image analysis. Instead of, instead of that, it uses the power of third party tools like Fiji. And now uh, is the question how you are gonna, uh, in the workshop situation, which is quite different from a normal life, how would you um, integrate those with Omero in order to teach uh, the usage of, uh, of such tools with Omero or on images stored in Omero? And then uh, you need to have some uh, setup and maintenance strategies about how to, how to uh, handle all this. Um, and of course, ultimately, this is all done in order for uh, your trainers and trainees at your institution to be happy and, of course, uh, probably raise the uh, profile of Omero and uh, widen your user base of Omero in your institution. Okay, so this is this is what I aim to to get you. Uh, of course, you will not. Uh, come away with a full package and ready to go. There is something to be invested, but you will know the concepts and how to achieve that state, at least from what uh, the OME team is able to give you uh, out of the box. And I will very clearly make the, the hints there about what you can get. Now, the training landscape is very heterogeneous as we just saw during the discussion right now. And uh, it's, it's very hard to talk about it in a linear manner. Uh, so let's, let's kind of have a look at it uh, as a, let's say a three dimensional box uh, where one dimension would be audience. So this might be the wet lab biologists, uh, scientists, uh, microscopists who are uh, basically interested uh, primarily in uh, in the mainstream science, so to say, and uh, not necessarily uh, in programming, but using Gomero as users and probably will be very much user interface bound. Then you have the uh, facility manager, the microscopy facility manager, which is also a user of Omero. Um, in some sense, we call it super user. And uh, um, yes, um, they will have other uh, other uh, emphasis in their careers. They will have other needs and other uh, other goals. But also, you have users which are kind of um, very good in uh, scripting, uh, who are let's say IT persons or um, image analysts. Very often in your institution. Uh, these are also users and uh, they have, again, another set of needs and aims and goals. Uh, then you have uh, the setup and resources which you want to uh, invest into the training of such users uh, from the most simple to uh, full built Omero with all bells and whistles, so to say. And then you have the workshop content. Um, 
and from uh, very simple workflows, uh, which are, let's say, user interface based or simple workflows, which are scripting based, um, whatever you choose, I will go into that uh, later. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you would think I can mix and match all these three dimensions and come up with some reasonable workshop setups. Uh, of course not. A majority of those setups makes no sense whatsoever. And later in my uh, uh, presentation, I will I will uh, go into that and give you some examples which we consider to be kind of reasonable. By the way, uh, I'm going to start with something which is of a, a greater interest for everybody, and this will be the uh, Omero guides, and then we can go um, slowly into a uh, more uh, depth and discussion. Okay, then we have uh, to ask ourselves key questions. So what is important for a workshop? Um, what can I get from the OME team? Because that's what, what I know. That's what this team knows. What, what can you get from us? So that obviously, unsurprisingly, will be the um, one of the key points of this, of this uh, uh, rather demo than workshop. And uh, how does the OME team run workshops? Uh, that's easy to answer. So we will present that. And what does the community have and want and discussion? So there is a GitHub issue and maybe I will pop in the chat also the link to the presentation so that you can follow the presentation. Um, just bear with me until I find the chat. Okay. Yes. So you can follow this presentation uh, in the link, which I just pasted into the chat. And if you go there, then you will find the link to the GitHub issue where the community started already discussing uh, their needs. Uh, so we put up a GitHub issue and you saw that some of our flash talkers uh, from this morning have uh, popped in uh, their uh, experiences and or wishes. And um, you are very welcome to have a look and of course chime in with whatever you need. I think uh, there, was, there was already hint to that during the discussion. So have a look at this issue, read, read it and uh, try to, try to uh, contribute if you only can. Okay, uh, you can see uh, the topic is of course quite wide uh, but hopefully you can get something out of it for yourself as well. And then we will go into breakout rooms. Let's say we can explore our training servers as you saw them during the trainings, which were already happening even during the course of this meeting and or other topics as you might choose. Okay. So what do I need for an Omera training? Uh, so first of all, I need the guides for participants. I need a server. I need to set that server up somehow. Uh, I need the third-party software analysis environment and server cleanup or redeployment strategy. This can be twofold. Uh, the um, server cleanup strategy is something which I would call accrued value. And this is what uh, the OME team is doing, basically keeping the training server almost indefinitely and then cleaning it up between sessions. Okay, uh, this, this works very well for the OME team. You might think otherwise. And of course the counter egg, uh, to that is the redeployment strategy where you would think I will spin up and trash the server between the training sessions. I will go into that in the, in the examples uh, later. So what can I get from my OME team? Uh, so I can get the walkthroughs for the, my training. That's, that's true. Uh, they are called Omero guides. Um, the servers of the OME team, which I use for the training, uh, can, I, can they be used for my training? Uh, there is a big question mark and uh, uh, you can ask us, but uh, don't expect too much. The, um, uh, can I get nevertheless a blueprint for a setting up of uh, my training server? Um, that is uh, definitely there. The, by blueprint, I mean a recipe uh, which, which uh, 
precisely specifies how and uh, uh, where and what exactly is set up on a training server of the OME team. And you can overtake this recipe. I will uh, hint to that in a second. Um, can I get the image data from the OME team? If, yes, indeed, we have uh, the image data publicly available. Majority of them comes from IDR anyway. And you can get setup scripts for users and groups on that server and for image imports, metadata handling and uh, creation of annotations um, as you um, as you as you please. Uh, these are maybe not the best ones in the world, but you will have a tour of them slightly as well and in this presentation. So I would urge you to go to this presentation uh, yourself because that's basically the bread and butter. Uh, we, for example, don't have an Omero guide for this very workflow I'm going through with you here now. The um, analysis and third party to environments was something already which was hinted to yesterday in the IDR workshop. Uh, if you missed that, it's basically an environment where you can spin up on the cloud an environment where your cell profile is running headlessly and can connect to your Omero. And this you can get as well from the OME team. And I will show you how in a second. So once more, all the OME team uh, walkthroughs, presentations and guides are public. And this concerns uh, also the images. So also this presentation, uh, obviously I could paste it to you because it is public. And if I click on that link, uh, you can see another example of another presentation which, with a kind of more normal um, Omero workshop, which was held last year in Münzingen, Germany. And this lives under downloads.openparkscrupy.org presentation. So if I just, if I just let's say, modify this URL, uh, you can see there are all the presentations. Yeah, so you can you can get to that very quickly from my presentation, which I which I just pinged you in the chat. Um, and the walkthrough of the workshop, which points basically to that mincing and walkthrough, is pointing to uh, the um, to the Omero guides. Now the walkthrough is a PDF. That is the PDF which was just mentioned in the discussion. Uh, Eric Ratamero mentioned that that this is something we will give to our users upfront. So that this is a lifeline and uh, we will always hammer down you, do you have that? Do you have that? Do you have that? And only then we will go there, uh, go ahead with the, with the training itself. Because if the user has that uh, during the training, then they can actually catch up and also use the, uh, the materials as they please even later. But in fact, there is no material. You can see that this is a, a collection of links. And the, mo the most important in this walkthrough is just the summary, which basically summarizes what will be done in that workshop. And the rest is pointing to the Omero guides. So if I go back to my presentation um, and go to the next slide. So what are the Omero guides? The Omero guides uh, are walkthroughs, as I said, it's not a step-by-step uh, -step description of the functionality. So not all the buttons in the user interface are described in the Omero guides. They are rather written as, as, a, as a workflow where you, the um, trainee or a scientist starts from point A, let's say importing images, and then it, uh, it follows rather the logical workflow of that scientist. Uh, or user of Omero uh, going through the steps which we know is natural. So we don't lose time uh, with the buttons which in this particular workflow are not necessary. Um, so these are the texts of course and these are the walkthroughs so um, which you can see highlighted here. The Omero guides are hosted on GitHub, which is basically a huge repository of, uh, let's say, text and code, mainly code, um, which uh, I'm sure the developers among you uh, know. This is not something you have to worry about too much now, but just take from me that the texts are hosted on GitHub and then they are published using the uh, read the docs, uh, the read the docs service. And we will go there in the minute, so you will see these, uh, which are perfectly readable. 
And this green box is just highlighting how the whole thing operates in the back end. There are text files in the, uh, on the GitHub repositories, which then uh, translate into those uh, read the docs texts. And then there are the bits of code as well, uh, which then translate if you, uh, let's say click inside that walkthrough on a badge, translate into spin up of a environment, let's say with Fiji or cell profiler, which you can then connect to your Omero server and your users in the training can connect to your Omero server and run cell profiler against the images on your Omero. Okay, so that is the power which Omero guides can give you. And the reason why it's split is because it's more flexible and you can maintain the code more easily here in those uh, uh, so-called repositories, GitHub repositories. So that's why the text is always bundled with the code. So let's go and have a, have a look at the, pardon me, have a look at the Omero guides. So if I go one slide back and then click on this link, okay. Then I am landing here. I hope that you found your way to the Omero guides. So this is kind of the nice part of this of this uh, workshop. And uh, you can see that I'm in uh, fairly easily uh, readable and also searchable environment where I can search for Omero guides. On the top left, that search really nicely works. First of all, uh, the Omero guides are pointing to the open microscopy environment YouTube channel, which we are really now pushing more and more as you saw also during the course of this uh, meeting. And you can find plenty of interesting videos for your participants there as well and for yourself for the teaching and training from previous uh, 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 workshops as well. Now we have two basic uh, walkthroughs. First, the Omero walkthrough example for basic users. And then we have, uh, so that's where you basically can point your users to uh, during, let's say, an induction training, uh, as for example mentioned by Stephanie, or um, you can uh, use uh, the Omero walkthrough for facility managers which will, uh, which are pointed to a more kind of super user of Omero, such as the facility manager of the facility, microscopy facility. So it's, it's written there what to do and how to lead your users and what to show them and a little bit how to communicate with your system administrator about Omero. Then, um, in the general section, we have some general concepts where basically there is the general introduction. Uh, here under upload data, first of all, you will get the uh, hint about how to import data into Omero. Under general introduction, you have the bread and butter of the workshop typically is it's the data management and cooperation and annotate data filter using annotations. These are indeed the most important ones. And then uh, you have the um, external software and Omero section, but actually you will probably find it much easier to navigate to that using those clickable icons underneath. So if you want to know about how to connect Elastic and Omero, then you click on that icon like so, and you can see that inside that Elastic, um, uh, we uh, walk through, you have a badge here, which says launch binder. That's where the code, which I was uh, highlighting on the slide comes into, into fruition here. So let's remember I had this, this code bit, okay, here highlighted. You can't see the code, of course, here underneath that badge, but if I click on that, that code is being executed and the MyBinder service starts. And when it's finished, I have a collection of Jupyter notebooks, which will teach my users how to connect Elastic to Omero and what they can do with Elastic and Omero. Okay, and uh, of course the notebooks uh, contain examples about how to, um, how to concretely uh, fetch some images from Omero, segment them from Elastic and put the results back to Omero, which they, your users can run. Okay, so these were the Omero guides. I hope uh, that this is kind of clear what, what is happening here. And uh, then uh, let's go and see how can, you, how can you basically set up your Omero server. Um, so um, 
let's take the lead from the OME team, of course, uh, because that's what we know. So the OME team uh, has, um, let's say, four main training servers, but two which are really in use publicly. Uh, all images on those servers are publicly available and OME team uses the accrued value approach. This means that it simply uh, keeps the servers kind of indefinitely there and always uh, adds the value. When, I, when we see some nice bits and new images, we will simply add them to that Omero server and uh, just clean the server between training sessions. Okay, so uh, some images are out with Omero stored in a public place which you can get your hands on and they are imported in place into Omero's into the training server but the majority of the images on the Omero training server are coming from the IDR okay uh, so the IDR images are denoted as kind of yellow and you can see that the majority of the Omero training server is uh, indeed comprised out of the IDR images now you have the bars here which denote the groups and user setup Okay, so that's how the OME um, uh, team is doing uh, the, their training servers. Alternative for you, meaning you can't overtake the OME team training server as it is, we just, we just stated that, but you can take a very good lead uh, from that. Uh, in the setup of your training server, you might use for the uh, IDR data, if you want to get them a service called Aspera. This was mentioned yesterday in the workshop. If you click on there, you can get the all the uh, raw data from uh, IDR into your training server by that service, uh, which basically entails uh, <coughs> copying them locally and then importing them into your training servers. And indeed, uh, the OM public images hosted by the OME team are also to your service if you want, if you want to download them and import into your training servers. Now, that that is now going a little bit into detail. I don't have time to, to go through those slides and you will be uh, uh, quite bored, but you have the presentation. Uh, maybe Will can help me and ping the presentation again into the chat of this of this Zoom because many people uh, came and you. Thank you very much for that and welcome. Uh, but if you really are serious about uh, setting up your training server according to uh, the recipe which OME team is giving you, then this is the part to read, okay? We, as I said, we, this is not captured anywhere else in this uh, shape or form. So, uh, so uh, please have a look. I will just go through the first two steps, which might not be completely uh, understandable. Maybe uh, get a server means get a box, get a machine first. You will have to set up your own server and then deploy Omero using Ansible playbook. The deploy Omero link will point you to a presentation of our former colleague, Simon Lee, which will tell you the whereabouts and how to's of uh, setting up an Omero server, especially for the training purposes. There are clear uh, pointers and also links to our serious uh, documentation. Uh, meaning system administrator documentation. That is the Ansible playbook, Ansible being a software which will help you to set up an Omero server on a machine. So it's a software deploy, it's a system deployment software. Okay. And you will, you will get a better idea again in this presentation, which is linked here, what that actually is. The Ansible playbook is the blueprint. I was talking about how to set up your Omero server and contains all the particularities. So when you set up Ansible and run that Ansible playbook on that uh, fresh box, you will get exactly the Omero server as the uh, OME team is using it. Minus, of course, groups, users, uh, data, and the uh, annotations on them, okay? But that's what the rest of this slide is about. So uh, one thing is to prepare groups and users and then play cheat. This is the next step. One thing which was kind of taken as a surprise uh, is maybe to get inspiration about how do we rename our users for the training uh, because uh, you might come up with ideas which then end up with duplication of first name and surname in the display. Uh, Omero must have first name and, uh, and last name displayed in the user interface. And if you rename your users with un, um, unthought through names, then uh, it might 
it might uh, kind of surprise your um, your trainees in the training. Then you can use uh, in place import. We can discuss about what that is. Uh, if you if you don't know, and here is described how and what. And then you have some setup set of scripts, which are basically coming from the training uh, uh, repo, training scripts repo, which will help you to, let's say, copy key value pairs, calibrate images, grab some uh, metadata from the IDR and put them on the images on the new server and so on and so on. We have actually Claire Stoffel, Stoffel here. Uh, you can ask her, she went through that. It's, it's, it's a lot of pleasure. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's doable, definitely. Uh, and you then have a very nice setup for your, um, for your users and trainees. So um, then you would like possibly to import some metadata uh, using possibly Omero web or command line and uh, run a script in order to pre-populate your server with some analysis results. This will be of huge advantage to you if you want to go into, uh, let's say, data mining tools such as Omero Parade, because if you didn't prepare such analysis uh, results, then you would not have the rich metadata and on many images, which you need to really be persuasive in your training. Now, the second alternative for you uh, would be something which was uh, suggested by the community. I'm not sure how far this is worked out. We definitely didn't play with that, uh, but the setup uh, assumes that you would simply have a, your own training server indeed, but you would go with the trash and uh, um, redeploy tactics. So trash the server after every uh, training and redeploy just before every training. Now, this would lose the accrued value approach and it would be very hard to imagine how will the value accrue, meaning if you come with a new data, new ideas, how will you put them into this training server when it's all the time trashed actually? It is not in existence. Yeah. So that, uh, that would be difficult. And that's why the idea from the community is suggesting that if you have your own production server on your side, then uh, you can have a, a restrictive restricted pen, let's say a, a group or a couple of groups inside Omero, where you are putting your data for training. And that's where the accrued value is, is uh, building up. So you are adding new images with new fancy annotations, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's it's living there nicely kind of indefinitely, because of course, you have to uh, have your production server there uh, nicely taken care of uh, for the uh, daily bread, bread and butter usage. Um, but every time when you want to give a training, you take this secluded pen from your uh, production server of data with accrued value and put them on this newly spun up uh, training server. You can either download the data and re-import them. I think Julio has some script already for that. And uh, or you, you can in place import uh, this data to both servers, which would be preferable if you want to spare space on your system. Okay, so uh, we can discuss it further. I mean, feel free. Uh, but that's just that's just uh, food for thought. Okay. Now I just promise you to uh, give you some uh, example setups, which we. Uh, find reasonable and or they are simply there ready for you to use so why not to why not to give it a try so first of all the, this setup is number one because it's ready for you to use you can set up a training on this setup and it will cost you practically no resources what I'm talking about here is using IDR. You know by now, hopefully, what IDR is. is the image data resource. And you have there all the data annotated. There is really plenty of data. You can access those data. Nevertheless, what you, uh, what you have to bear in mind is that IDR is by the nature read-only server. So you cannot write uh, your result, analytical results back into that Omero server, into that IDR server. But if you do some analysis, you can do it locally. We also offer an S3 storage side-by-side. Uh, -side. It's also run on the EBI. 
And there are some examples of images out of IDR, which we simply transformed into the OMI ZAR and stored in S3. And we have an analysis environment. So you know by now how to get those because I just shown you uh, in the Omero guides uh, step how to get an analysis environment with the Jupyter Notebook where there is ready-made example how to grab image from S3 in the as OMI ZAR form and uh, grab it and uh, drag it into that environment, do some segmentation. And then let's say uh, uh, um, the results can be then stored, let's say locally or inside the notebook. The same uh, is there is a recipe how to grab uh, some images from IDR and run them in this analysis environment. So you have some portfolio of workflows which you can run there. And, but uh, of course, these workflows will be necessarily uh, tailored uh, to this API access usage. There will be very, very little of user interface interaction indeed. You will not be able to teach the user group setup because there is no user group setup to, to worth mentioning on the IDR. It's basically one user in one group. And uh, you will attract only the users which are really intended uh, on programming and scripting, okay? But uh, as I said, uh, limited results, nevertheless, uh, cost-free setup. Setup number two is, which I give here for completion sake, because the community very often falls back on that. And in my opinion, a little bit erroneously assumes that this is a valid setup that I will simply spin up a server and there will be no images, maybe just a group and user setup because this is cheap to, to achieve. The import of images is the most uh, costly part of the setups. And now that looks like I could, uh, I could attract um, many of those wet lab users or the facility managers because they will be user interface workflows. But because I don't have any images on that server practically in practical terms, what I will have to teach only is the import of image data into such empty server. So it looks like very attractive setup, but the lower user satisfaction will, uh, in our opinion, be the result. And that's probably not what you want in the end. Um, because either you, you show only that limited uh, setup, uh, limited amount of workflows, or you are co or constantly trying to persuade your users to imagine something. Imagine you would have a Z stack, imagine you would have a time lapse, uh, which doesn't work very well, of course. Uh, setup number three is uh, kind of golden middle, I, I, uh, we feel. The uh, se such setup would have a number of server with groups and users which are set up. So the bars are here and several images um, don't have to be fancy or anything. You can of course choose the images which are the image um, modalities and formats which are used in your facility uh, are imported for one user. Okay, uh, that's uh, middling cost. You have to have just a little setup, but you will get for that a large audience. You will get the wet lab scientists which, and the facility managers, which will be much happier to train on such server uh, because there are some images. You can teach import data management, viewing and drawing of ROIs, uh, annotations. You can use the uh, connection of, uh, via the Fiji plugin uh, with Fiji and analysis in Fiji where there is full user interface. Maybe not scripting, though, because this needs more. Uh, this needs more images uh, and images of certain uh, certain type. You can do simple searches, and you can show Omero figure, which is of course hugely important. Okay, because you do have some images. So basically, take from those two slides, the previous one and this one. Uh, some images are almost always necessary. So uh, yeah. Then we have a setup suggestion before, which is a full copy of Omero server, okay? I do know that some of you would go this way because in the end, if you want to be serious about your training, that's where you would end up. Um, I just showed you the two slides which, will, which are leading you through about how to do such full copy of the Omero server. And um, uh, this has, of course, the huge advantage that all the groups of your users will be uh, will be kind of satisfied. You will be able to use um, 
um, to use all the workflows, uh, teach all the workflows. You will also, if you import the IDR data, that's the, that's the border where you need the IDR data for some workflows which use the API and third party tool analysis such as cell profile, you will need specific IDR data to import them into your training server. But the, the benefit of that, if you do, uh, do do that setup, is that uh, you will really have a full workshop as the OME team is doing that with all the bells and whistles, okay? And you satisfy the users, of course, much more than than uh, uh, than with uh, half empty or empty server, okay? But this setup needs planning, space, and maintenance, obviously. Okay, so. I think we are at the end of the allotted time. I think that the, is it so? Um, uh, sorry, I will try to switch to the program. You have plenty of time. You have been on still half an hour to go over questions. Okay. And you'd, okay. You're fine. Very good. Sorry. Um, so um, we have now, the situation where we have uh, the training servers for the discussion. So I just uh, basically um, went through the training servers possible setup and what you could do in your institution. Now in the uh, community, there was a uh, need expressed for a Docker, which would possibly be based on the OME deployment examples. Uh, this is our thought, this is the OME team side so, thought. Uh, the OME deployment examples are having some uh, simple Docker images where you can very quickly, if you, if you are familiar with the Docker software, uh, uh, spin up an OM, Omero server, okay? So uh, this would be uh, something which would, uh, which would uh, uh, help to set up an empty server. Uh, the second suggestion from the community was to have a Docker Compose with all the data included. Uh, that is something interesting, uh, but if we want to uh, think about that, then a couple of points to make clear, because maybe if you are not familiar with Omero or with how to set up a server, then you might not realize that. The most uh, costly part of the uh, setting up of the training environment is the import of the data of the images into your server. That will take time. You will have to make the data somehow available uh, to yourself. So download them via Aspera from IDR or take them from the um, OME teams or take them from internal resources. But definitely you will have to import them into your Omero training server. Then you need to uh, then uh, you need to think about this. Some people will jump to a wrong conclusion thinking that if I have an Omero server or there is an Omero server and I have a second Omero server, the, uh, the transfer of data between those two Omero servers is, is, it will be easy. It will be, it will be logical. It will be just, just flying. That is not true. That uh, workflow is not, uh, is, is a work in progress very much from the point of view of the OME team. It's basically an epic and uh, you have to, you have to think about that. So but that's why even from your production Omero server onto the training server, you would have to think about a strategy, how to download and re-import the, the uh, teaching data, okay? Now the size of the data and the complexity, uh, meaning the previous two points clearly lead into that. Uh, either you, um, you are handling only small batches of data and then uh, you are happy to transfer all the time or you are handling large batches of data and then you are not happy to re-import over and over again. Um, this probably be some balance like that to strike. Um, and that's why you have to then decide whether you keep uh, your training server indefinitely up and clean up or spin up and delete. And one of the, one huge point, which many of you might not realize uh, when starting with the Omero server, it is just like with the software packages, which was discussed in the discussion. 
and uh, this is maintenance and upgrade. So um, any time uh, by maintenance uh, we mean uh, things like um, you have to do on your server if you maintain it security patches, backups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You need to upgrade Omero on that server because you always want to teach the Omero which is relevant for your institution, meaning the Omero version which is relevant for your institution. You need to upgrade the Omero apps such as Omero figure on that server. Um, you need to uh, simply maintain an upgrade, okay? Uh, if the things are locked in a Docker, um, then you have to somehow, or somebody has to uh, keep up with those upgrades. Um, if not, if you are keeping your server indefinitely, the same actually applies. You have to somehow have uh, thought through what will you do next year because things will almost certainly get outdated, okay? Uh, as OME team is running uh, the and the servers, the training servers, I can tell you that the maintenance and upgrades is actually the main burden. Okay, nowadays uh, we are having all the walkthroughs, everything is ready, the data are there, we have the accurate value, we have everything annotated, we can spin out a training basically on a day's notice, uh, meaning on our server, of course. Um, that's all fine, but the maintenance and upgrades are still there and still to be done. Okay. Just so, a quick question, Peter, if that comes from the chat, which you probably haven't have don't have time to monitor. So there was I asked about like the workflow. I mean, uh, Fred from uh, from Mika has said there's another condition. In their case, they're doing the training on the production server itself, as the users will be essentially well stay there, right? These are new users, and I don't I don't know if that's something that's been explicitly discussed because we're here discussing a training server. I mean, I don't know if you want to comment on this, and I assume this has the advantage in terms of the upgrade that essentially you upgrade your production server at the same time. So I don't know if you can comment on the distinction between well production and training, and why we would you would pick one versus the other. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I hope that Frederick can chime in. Um, the, I, um, wait, where is he? Okay. Uh, 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 Fred is not here. He had to go, but I can answer the question for him because we are working together on that. Yeah, go ahead, Sophie. Pat. Thank you. Yeah, so just in our case, I don't know if you are the only ones in that situation, but the way we are training our users, and when I mean users, it's it's basically uh, people who just, um, for the moment, we don't do too much image analysis in our part because we are just discovering the different things that you can do using Omero. And so basically what we are trying to do is to get people to actually use the database. And so for the moment in the training part, Every time we train someone, it will be someone that has a need in, in the, they will acquire images. I basically do like Stephanie that she discussed it this morning, like we do the training on the systems. And then when the person is trained on a system, I will train that person on Omero. And usually I do exactly like Claire, I will try to do tiny groups of people to do the training. And because of that, particular way of doing the training, we don't really, for the moment, need a, a, a training server because basically people will be trained on the actual database on their images. So Do you have training, so you don't need the server. Do you have any training data? So I mean, so and Peter differentiated the, oh. you know, the deployment oh. and the training, you know, in addition to their image, you have like sample data to kind of also yeah, show have, the concept, right? Yeah, we have a few images because we, we have like a, a public uh, Omero that we can, like people have access to. So we put that kind of images there so that people have access to them. And during the actual training, when we show people how to manage their data, how to do more figures, etc., they will do it on their images. So in the training, people are not going to use the same image for everything, but we still have one major problem, which is an issue that I think was discussed this, well, the entire Omero meeting was the fact that our users do not annotate their, 
<laughs> their images. So we currently have this issue and we're going to look into it. Um, I'm sorry, can you maybe repeat the, the problematic issue? Because I, I'm not sure I caught it. No, it's, it's an issue about the fact that we, the users don't have the uh, reflex to annotate correctly their images. Like our users don't really use the tag, stuff like that. So we're going to have to look into this to make people use them. Yes, I understand. So basically, then you then you are faced with the problem like, what, sh why, sh how, how should I teach tagging when there are no tags and no comprehension about their usefulness and and nothing yeah. is done upfront? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alexander has a question. Just for the training server, is there any reason why it could not be implemented with a virtual machine? I'm just in the process of setting up a training server in a virtual machine, clone that, and start it to the users. And whenever uh, the course is finished, I delete the cloned version and go back to my original one. So I have to, of course, keep the original one updated, but I can add new images, whatever, and just start the VM depending on the use. Can you uh, once more remind me what is the, the father of the clone? What is that? So this is an empty uh, Omero installation where I uploaded uh, a couple of our own training images or some from IDR. But I keep that clone always uh, up to date. I can add new images. And whenever there is a course, I start just clone it and start the clone. OK, so then you, then you would get a full duplicate of that Omero server. So yeah. you would double the size of the data which you have to take care of, but this doesn't matter because there are there are not that many images. Do I get it right? There are not that many images, or I have a couple of them which are soft linked to our own uh, uh, data repository. So the only thing with a soft link is a classical problem of making sure this, what the link is pointing to hasn't been modified elsewhere, yeah. obviously. But that, that's that applies anyway, right? Mm -hmm. and that's, uh, Yes. We have everything that is as soon as it is linked in Omero, it's to set to read only, and then it's on the on the general cap file share. In the VM capacity, that's certainly something we can do. I mean, in our case, uh, the training servers that uh, Peter is talking about are also VMs in VMware. So okay. uh, that's not something we're doing right now, but it would be completely doable to take a snapshot before a training session, let the training session uh, happen, and then revert to this snapshot. So something we haven't done, but and then, yeah, you would get the state of the database of the image just as it was right before yeah. the training. As a, can play around whatever they want, they can modify and uh, there's no persistent change. So there's nothing against that. Uh, not from the top of my head, but uh, you know, the, there is a very nice sentence in the, in the presentation of uh, our colleague Simon Lee about the uh, server deployments. And this is, there is no substitute for experience. And he's got a very dramatic slide about that works, works fine in, uh, in, in uh, how to say, in experimental setup, but uh, blows up in production. I, I don't want to be pessimistic, of course, yes. But what I want to say is we don't vouch with our, our experience for such setup. Uh, this is nothing against that. That's why we're having this discussion. But I just, you know, I just highlight it. And actually, your setup was in the number two. So for your information, this yeah. this setup yeah. this setup was suggested by, by Julio from Montpellier. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that you that you can detect him here in the meeting or on the GitHub issue. Actually, it's from the GitHub issue itself. Uh, he doesn't clone the he doesn't clone the whole box because he doesn't have the box which you have. You have a free box like and a free Omero server, which is like the father of all your training Omero servers. Let's call it like that. Yeah. And that's where you are accruing value and and adding the new images and annotations. And then you clone it. He was thinking about a sub pen of uh, of production his server. production server, which again is uh, has the advantage as just mentioned by Frederick 
where you, for the maintenance and upgrades, of course, because your clone is again a burden on maintenance and upgrades. It will be outdated at, at one point. Yes, it, yeah. I mean, in our world, we know that the community doesn't upgrade so much as we are spitting spitting out the new versions, but uh, we think we we think uh, the community should. So, yeah. Uh, th that's the only that's the only thing which comes to mind and i think we would really uh, appreciate if you could somehow point us to you know a bits of your workflow or or uh, give us feedback what went wrong and what didn't but there is no there, there is nothing against that of course not the only thing is uh, which i think you can do quite nicely to to have the user group set up uh, to have the user group set up on your on your father clone very very well thought through even if you have the data in one account only which is understandable for the reasons of uh, yeah for the for the for the resources reason uh, it's good to to fiddle out the the usernames and uh, what groups will the people share because they can work still on that one account by virtue of the cooperation in omero if you think that's training situations through, uh, because I know that uh, in one of those flash talks or in the discussion, there was a remark, even when I did, I think Eric Ratamero made that remark, even when I do, uh, um, you know, a lot of effort into the training setup, when in training the users come into the server, it's such a shock that they would, uh, they would be confused about whose data am I on and who is who. So if you want to teach the cooperation aspect, it's anyway a challenge. Uh, the, the cooperation in Omero is great, but teaching the cooperation aspect yeah. of Omero is a challenge because the people will be always knocked off their feet as they are used to being immediately recognized by Google as with their personal name, you know, in the first moment when they enter. That's, of course, a little bit nasty of, from the side of the software, uh, you know, and the GDPR, but they don't perceive it like that they perceive it as a convenience which is meant and this convenience is not there in the training and it's even more complicated if it comes to public access if if they want to share some of their data for publication or something like that this i realized yeah yes yes indeed yeah then then uh, that, yeah they come into question like uh yeah who is still Somebody must own the data in Omero. Who is owning the data when I'm when I uh, get them into the public group? And so we have actually a case like that now here uh, in our homegrown Omero server, which we run for the for the Dundee University. Okay, mm -hmm. there, Peter Peter Zentis has a question, please. Yeah, just just a remark, maybe or also a question. Um, so we are doing it in the same way it was described before that we are also doing the training on our production server. Um, mostly for the reason that, that we want to take this extra step from the users that they had, have to switch from the demo server to the production server after the training. Um, and, and to also do this training on, on text and so on. I created two groups where there's one user which has lots of data also on nicely nicely annotated, but of course this is a lot of work um, and error prone as well. Um, so, but I thought with the current version of Omero, which we do not yet have in Cologne, there's this possibility of doing deep copying. So I guess yes, indeed. as soon as we have the new um, new version of Omero running, uh, I will just have to to copy this group I have or the data from that group I have to a new group each time I do a training, and then I have my my nicely annotated data set for training. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, for. Uh, Pointing that out, uh, Peter. So this is this is a relatively new feature. We we call it uh, deep copy, or however, I will find it in a second in our documentation and ping it in the chat. This is uh, something which can be used. Uh, uh, which can be used with advantage for uh, copying the data as just highlighted. Uh, it's just highlighted. 
uh, okay, it's called command line duplicating objects. And uh, it is in the Omero guides under data management and cooperation. So uh, let me just navigate so that I can give you a decent link, data management and cooperation. Uh, okay, step-by-step step, duplicate plugin, command line duplicate objects, very good. Okay, so I'm pinging you that in the chat. This is a relatively new feature I'm sorry about it. I just pinged it only to one participant. So let me just ping it to everybody. So this is a relatively new feature. Um, one, one remark to make immediately, it's, it's very attractive and it works uh, well, at least in our hands. Uh, you might, Peter, you might maybe uh, contact uh, yeah, your, your colleagues in Germany, the, some of them are definitely using it. I think that the Düsseldorf uh, crew is using that feature already and they can give you some uh, real life uh, hints about that. Uh, the, um, um, the thing to remark there is that that feature is command line only, okay, at the moment. So you will have to install a plugin uh, so-called duplicate plugin. But if you do that, then you have in your hands means to copy the whole graphs or bits of graphs, meaning uh, in Omero, you have project which contains data sets, which are linked to the project and underneath are images and to the images are linked annotations and regions of interest and tags and, and whatever, whatever, you name it. That's the, that's the kind of, as you, as Peter said, the hard part, the, um, uh, the thing which you would like to have upfront for your training and you might have it somewhere somewhere else and you want to uh, let's say propagate it copy it then you run this uh, this duplicate command on the command line and it will um, uh, yes very nice thank you very much Anna uh, Hannah from uh, Düsseldorf as I just uh, uh, mentioned is is uh, giving thumbs up for the feature um, so you basically have the advantage that even if the, if the original graph, meaning that the project and the data sets are of mixed ownership, when you make the duplicate, the duplicate is in its entirety owned by the duplicator. Yeah? So the graph is clean and it duplicates everything. So all the tags and everything, all the linkage is preserved and you have real copy. Also, the images are copied, but your uh, storage doesn't doesn't rock it because the raw data are kind of cleverly linked inside the managed repository so that it doesn't duplicate the raw data. So there is no burden for you and you can take the clean copy and do whatever you like. You can use it in many workflows, including publication, uh, including moving data between groups but also of course for training, when you take the copy then and uh, let's say move it to another group, that's, uh, that's kind of clean because the produced graph of data is of one ownership only. This is quite important. Uh, if you want to you know, deal with the complex graphs of data, like images, projects, data sets, annotations, et cetera, and move them between groups. The, the, the duplicate plugin give you a huge edge there because uh, the duplicates are easy to handle. And uh, as well, uh, Anna, do you have a link to, to this server-side script? Um, I mean, <clears throat> it's not published yet. There was a discussion in, on image SC where like um, Josh um, provided the, let's say, backbone for the script and I modified it a bit to our needs, but it's not uh, published so yet from until now, but I can share it, of course. Yes, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, these, are, these are the strategies. Uh, I mean, uh, the the thing which which I think is to remark here, which I feel is, um, I just have to read the chat as well. I'm sorry, I didn't have time uh, to read it all through, but uh, um, okay. Uh, yeah, to remark here is with the with the production server, what at least uh, our feeling is, 
is that uh, the user will learn a lot and uh, he or she is on their own data. That's, that's true, but they are kind of penned in their user account in Omero and the teaching of the, uh, of the cooperation aspects is then hard to achieve because people don't realize the group user system. The permission system of Omero is not ideal, but it definitely works and is much better than, than not having one. And the cooperation is sometimes missed, at least in this automatic run of the mill of the facility, at least as we can see here in Dundee, people will take the cooperation for granted and they don't realize, for example, they have to be in the correct group uh, or the group uh, permissions uh, have some bearing on uh, what they can or cannot do with their data and uh, or others' data. Uh, and or that the Omero figures also are actually stored inside a group. Um, all, this, all this is then uh, hard to probably to pass this information. But uh, of course, I understand that for you, it's, uh, it's, it's much easier to, uh, to set it up on your production server. And if you have the user by user, uh, basically one-to-one -one teaching, then again, you get, uh, you get the advantage of surmounting what Claire was uh, mentioning in the discussion that, uh, that you have um, uh, basically better attention of the, of the trainee and indeed uh, better cooperation. Uh, yeah, we, we find it also ourselves in our remote trainings now that the Zoom has obviously much uh, narrower capacity to channel through information than the real contact because you can't see the faces and you realize how, how important that is. You can't also go around and see over people's shoulder on their screens, uh, which, which is very crucial because the trainees will misreport uh, about what they are actually doing. Even then when they have a goodwill, they don't understand what is happening to them and uh, they will they will react in a, um, unexpected ways and give you feedback which is actually rather misleading um so uh, uh, yeah it's 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 what it is yeah um okay i will try to to react on the on the chat because i'm i'm falling back very much behind so if you have other questions or remarks then please uh, uh let's hear them Like the chat included in conversation from Ken about how to in Docker get some ideal data set into a training server. So I kind of repeated the steps which are download the raw data first and the raw data needs to live somewhere. And that's as far as the way to do that. And the second step is to in place import these and annotate and, and do all the work. So the for ideal we've got the repositories with scripts to do I mean, or configuration files to do all of that. I don't know, I couldn't answer how easily they bolt into the um, the scripts you've mentioned, Peter, which is I want to import uh, and these IDR study for these user and this group of my training so servers. So I'm not sure we have this connection perfectly working so that we can just feed, you know, uh, an ID or study repository and say, I've got the data, I've got the study repository, now do the stuff. So I don't think we're at this level of sophistication. Uh, I, I can, are you there? Uh, I think I understand now the, the uh, what, what is going on here in this discussion. Um, yes, I'm, okay, so- Yes, I'm, uh, I'm here. Thank you. So um, the, the thing uh, is that uh, you, you uh, so uh, you ask for a so you you are basically in your thoughts transferring data from IDR onto your training server or onto a server. Let's let's not uh, yeah, let's, yeah 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 yeah. Um, okay, now you definitely want to use Aspera. Yes, you you want okay. to download and upload, and then uh, you are expecting a script which will which will target a particular group and user. Um, on your target server to put the data into. Uh, we actually do have such script. And if you go please to the presentation, I will start sharing. Okay, again. Okay. 
do you have access to that presentation I just was going through? That that's crucial because there is there are a ton of links. Okay, and if you don't have that, you will not get to I, it. I don't think I don't think the link for the presentation is up yet, or is it? It's in the chat. It's in the chat. Oh, okay. Somebody, uh, but we we need to repaste it because you joined later. I yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. So so I will. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Great. Uh, are you are you viewing that slide I am on now? Ken, can you see my screen? Uh, yes. I Very good. Yes, yes. So this this is what we have. This is the walkthrough uh, which I was going through. Oh, okay. um, so you did. You, uh, this is done for you. You you didn't do Ansible playbook. You you somehow got to an empty server state. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pre you prepared your groups and users. That's fine. Yeah, we yeah. we we have some uh, scripts for that too, which you can use. And all those links are really links. Okay. So you can okay. you can go to those scripts. You can see what a group and user setup we have. And now I will bother you with that because this has an implication for my answer further. Uh, what we are setting up there are four groups. That's nice, but our main group for training is uh, of a read annotate character so that we can teach on in Omero okay. the read annotate environment. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's obvious because this is the most popular group, so to say, or we think it should be the most popular. And indeed, I think it is. Yeah. So you can read and annotate each other's data. Then you have two trainers. This is less important, but you, you have somehow, uh, you see, they are administrators in Omero. And then you have the bread and butter users. These are your users, the, your trainees, okay? There yeah. are 50, 50 of them, and they are members of all four groups. But actually the three, the three groups which are not read annotate, they are of course private, uh, read write and read only. They are kind of only poor relations on that server. What we care about really is the read annotate group. That must be full of data because that's where the main training is happening. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is the setup. And then the script you are, you are asking asking for is here it's it's saying using a bash, a bash script. script okay if i click okay. on that you are getting a bash script there i just uh, in the, import. okay yeah, yeah yes there is an in place import but i also hint in the presentation about how to make it non in place import you just kick out the transfer yeah, yeah, lns yeah, yeah, line yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And you are there. You can you can use the bulk files for repeatability, but that's that's on only to be kind of fair on on your side. That's fine, but you don't have to, of course. And the script is pretty versatile. Okay. So if you see the the um, what I'm highlighting here, the uh, declaration of uh, basically how it's called environment variables. Okay, uh, for your bash script. Uh, you can see that you can declare almost anything. So you are asking about, well, the host is obvious, you have to get that right. Uh, then the number is basically saying uh, imported 50 times over for all the users, if, if you, of course, pass 50. Yeah? By default, it's 50. Uh, uh, and but of course you will be you yourself will be very very quickly able to uh, adjust even the text of the script uh, so that it uh, repeats for users uh, 35 yeah. to through to 40 only. Yeah? Okay, that's the training script. Yeah. That, that should not be that should not be a problem for yourself. Then there is a declaration of the user who is who is basically importing and uh, you can import from a folder. So if your data are locally or somewhere else where you downloaded them from, uh, from IDR via Aspera, uh, yeah, et cetera. We already discussed if you, if you don't want the in place import, if you can't support that, then you just kick out the transfer LNS here. But the script is working. The, you, you were also asking in chat, like, what is, what's wrong with those scripts, OK? Are they not working or, or, or what? And I'm saying they are working. I know that we use them, uh, no, all the just... data. In, but the problem with them yeah. is that the documentation, that's what I'm trying to ah, supply okay, to you okay. here, you see? The, okay. the, that is so weak that I have to use this strange means of passing the information yeah. to you. OK, gotcha, gotcha. Because I think. I think the um, the training script, the, the the main part of GitHub is that, that um, uh, these scripts are not supported, and then hence I was worried about using those scripts. Um, but uh, um, but you, you seem to be pointing to those scripts yes, itself. So yes. so I was I was a bit kind of like I'm not exactly sure uh, uh, mm -hmm. which one to use, but. I think your your presentation. I think what I'm going to do is to follow your presentation. This this page, 
uh, and then that will that will probably work, I suppose. Yes, I I yeah. think if if you if you agree, I, I I wanted to ask it actually in the discussion. Possibly the presentation, mainly those two slides here, should actually be an Omero guides walkthrough. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. That's 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 yes. starts or, to be quite or, clear. Or, or or maybe in the GitHub, there's just one page. So like, you know, follow this and then you will have a server with all these images and you can yes. select different images from idea the way that you want. Uh, and maybe if there is an option that you can do a similar for other servers. So for example, you now own servers, you can, I can select some, some images and I can put it in and the script should work for those. Uh, that would be great. But if not, I mean, I mean, I think, I think it's something that, Maybe as community, we'll probably uh, probably have a have a group on e image SC to to put those things together. It can be reused and other uh, um, example in terms of that. Yes, yes. I mean, I I don't know if you saw um, there is in that presentation a link to a GitHub issue. Um, yeah. Can can you see that one? I mean, if you have ideas needs, so feel free to put it there, please. Okay. Yeah. As okay. as a comment, and then we can we can we can take it from there. I think right. for you it would be very easy to to okay. chime in there. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I if never you... know. I never. Yeah. I never know where. I mean, I kind of like sort of shout sort of up in the image SC part and to to, to ask for for help. But okay. So uh, I should go into Omero guys and that. Okay. And uh, up to you. Image SC okay. is, of course, of course, our main point of contact. Okay, uh, feel, okay. free, feel free to shout at Image SC. Okay. It's, it's <laughs> what it's for. Uh, no stopping that. Okay. And of course, in in in, in case of doubt, uh, do that. But okay. if you are really really do doing those topics which we yes. are just yeah. doing, that's for training. Okay. You can okay, see. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can get a lot of inspiration there. And okay. uh, yeah. I'm I'm working there towards that guide. I just. I just mentioned then you have the first version of that. The problem is that it just kind of grew over my head. You know, the, 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 there are so many things to say that it started <laughs> to be an opus of, of 17 pages. And I, I didn't like it myself. But as you said, as you give a clear hint, let's make an Omero guide from those two slides. That, that seems straightforward enough. And the scripts seems to be quite crucial. Yeah. And uh, they, they do work because of this uh, of following thing uh, uh, we would not be able to keep up and maintain those training servers without okay. those scripts so yeah. that is the kind of guarantee but it's very much in inverted commas that's why they those yeah. scripts do get their their share of testing yeah okay thanks yeah not at all so we're reaching pretty much the end of these workshop uh i don't know if there's any more question? I'm going to close the breakout room very soon to allow everyone to have a well-deserved break before going for the uh, closing remarks uh, of this session at in about 10 minutes. So I don't see anything. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>